All right, Leah. So when you talk to a parent, you guys are on the intro call mm -hmm. and you guys are talking about the program and, and they end up saying, we're too busy. We, we can't make the commitment that you have. How do you look to handle that? How do you respond when you're on that call with the parent? Yeah, so I think the first the first thing to to do is obviously agree with them. So agree with with what the parent is saying. So I understand, Mrs. Jones, uh, that you you guys are busy. Now let me ask you, what what days in the week would work for you? So once that parent responds with uh set time or set day that, that they can make it then you you can then maybe look at your schedule and maybe make a compromise to say okay this is tuesday at 5 p.m works perfect with me let's let's make that work now another way you can do it is if they can't commit every single week but they can commit to maybe uh, once every two weeks then what you can say you can say is okay, Miss Jones. I see that Tuesday at five pm works great with you. How about we do two hours of training so that way you're getting two weeks uh, training in advance, and then the following week, so you, we do two weeks of training, two hours, and then once we get to the third week, we do another two weeks, and that means uh, Johnny has got uh, his maximum amount of time. Uh, during the month of training cool so you're saying if someone says they're too busy and that could also apply if they live too far away mm -hmm. they could just come do two sessions in in like one day so it's more convenient for them yeah and they do that two times out of the month so they get their four sessions so they still get the same amount of sessions but they're doing it in less amount of visits right Correct. Cool. So let, let me ask you then, if let's say you drill down on the day and the time mm -hmm. with the parent and they sound like they are really committed uh, over the phone, they sound like it. And then they're like, well, you know, if we commit to this day, can we, can we change the day coming up? Like, do we have to stick with this day? to be a part of your program like how, how do you handle that with someone who is trying to ultimately they're trying to create their own schedule with you versus following your schedule yeah so that's that's a great question so the way i would approach it is when you're on the on the phone to mrs jones uh, you make it very clear that once we have agreed the set day set time uh, on this call that i can't go back and then change it so once we have our set day, set time that we've agreed both will work for us, then that can't be adjusted or changed later down the road. So that way, uh, Miss Jones knows that, okay, fine, like I have to make a commitment. And if I can't make it, make it, then it's on me because I already know that Leo or whoever the coach is, isn't able to to adjust his time or day just because something else came up. Right. So that could like, cause I know a common question we get from coaches is like, well, how do you, how do you have a set schedule with parents? Mm. But based on what you're just saying, it's like you are setting the schedule over the phone and you're letting them know that that is the plan over the next X amount of months, whatever it is. And the parent knows they cannot go back and change the schedule based on what they want. It's like they're committing to set day, set time, set location for whatever the contract is, right? All right. Yeah. So there's there's two things you're really touching base on. Um, first one is obviously we've overcome the uh, too busy objection because we've asked the question, right? So what day during the week can you make it? So Ms. Jones has obviously responded saying Tuesday at 5 p.m. is great for us. Okay, perfect. So we've overcome that objection. Now, the second one is making sure that you're firm and letting the, letting Miss Jones know that 
this isn't something that you can then change later down the road, All right? So once we've agreed set day, set time, we're sticking to this time and it can't be amended for any reason uh, late, later on. Good, okay, awesome, that, no, that makes sense. So Ben, uh, so you're, you're on the phone to, to Mrs. Jones and the uh, dreaded question comes up that uh, we can't afford the, the price you've just uh, given us. Um, is there any way we can negotiate the price? So how, how would you handle that with a parent? Yeah, I would say, well, you're right, Ms. Jones, this is a, it's a very big investment. And the difference is when, when you invest into our program, your child will get the transformation that we've talked about over the last 20 minutes on this call. Mm -hmm. And would you say it would be worth it for you guys as a family to make the full investment into our program? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna see what she says. Now, if she, like, she, of course she's gonna say yes, because mm -hmm. like we're talking on Zoom, but if she's like, yes, but we just we can't afford it, mm -hmm. I would say, okay, great. Well, let me see if I can customize a solution that can work for you mm -hmm. based on what you can afford. Now, if we do this, Ms. Jones, it's going to involve you recruiting a new family into our program. Is that something you're comfortable with? So you can see now what I'm doing is saying you can, you can join at a discount, but you, there, there's a condition. You are now attaching yourself to a new family that I don't know yet that's going to join the program. So now I'm taking someone who couldn't afford it and I'm having them bring on someone who can. <laughs> and now I'm adding two clients at once. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. And Perfect. if, let's say she's like, she's like, well, you know, we don't know another family that can afford it. Mm -hmm. Then I would say, great. Well, the next best option is you guys could, could come to one of our upcoming clinics. That, that's our most affordable option that, that we offer to families. Those are only $50, there, there's no long-term commitment. And I feel like if you guys are looking for a discount, that would be the next best option for you guys. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this way there's still something that they can do even if they can't bring someone in because I still want them to come to something versus nothing. Correct. Now, if a coach doesn't run clinics? That's where uh, I look at a couple of things. So this is why I think it's so important for coaches to know other coaches in their niche, in their city. Mm -hmm. Because if I'm talking to someone that can't afford it, I don't have any clinics. Then I would say, well, Ms. Jones, I'd love to refer you to another coach that I know that I feel like we'll have a more affordable program that could be better suited for you guys. His name is, and then I say, do you want me to connect you and him together so you can talk to him because his program is a little bit more affordable. Mm -hmm. I feel like at this point, that might be a better fit for you guys. So what I'm doing is I'm not coming down on my price. Yeah. I am sending them to someone that I trust that coach is going to be happy about it because he's going to get a new client. And then I can create an affiliate partnership with that coach where he's paying me when that family joins his program. So I'm still making money. Mm -hmm. I'm just not doing any work. <laughs> Correct. Correct. Yeah. Cool. So say, say everything goes well with the parent then on the phone. And this is something that's very common for coaches. And you start talking about a payment system. So the parent has been working with other trainers in the past and they've done everything cash in hand. So paying you at the field. Now, how do you go about with a conversation where obviously you're, you don't do that, your, your, your model is completely different. How do you have that conversation with Miss Jones? Yeah, so when we get to the point after we've talked about the investment and they sound like they're, ready to join, um, I look to lead, I lead this part of the call where mm -hmm. I tell them what the instructions are, which is very different than being asked, what can they do? It's, and it goes like this, it's, all right, Ms. Jones, when you guys enroll, I'm gonna send you an email 
It's going to have a link to enroll through our online system. Mm -hmm. And we only accept clients who enroll through our online system. And we do that to protect ourselves. And we know that, like, and I would only bring this part up if she's like, yeah, I can pay you cash. Like, I'm not going to like go through this specific part, but um, she's like, yeah, can we pay you cash? I'd be like, no, we only accept clients who enroll online. And we do that because there's a different commitment level. Yeah, love that. When you do that. And, and if they're skeptical about paying online, I'll just say, well, do you guys have Netflix? Do you pay a, a phone bill online? Yeah, I mean, the internet, bill, like, so I'm not going to, like, go through all those examples, but, <laughs> yeah. uh, but that can remove me from dealing with, all right, I want them to pay online, but they're paying cash, like, yeah. and, and it is okay. I've done this, like, I've had parents that are like, yeah, we, we don't want to pay online. We just want to pay uh, in cash when we see it. I'll say, mm. I'll just say, well, I don't think you guys are good fit for our program. Yeah. So I push them away. Yeah. So they know that I'm in charge. It's my business. It's not their, they didn't start the business. I did. Mm. So mm. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dictate how I get paid, not them. Mm. Cool. All right. So when you get on the call with the parent, and mm. let's say that parent has been browsing around Google or Instagram that day. And you're just one of the calls that, that they have because they're, they're searching for other coaches and they're trying to select the right coach for their child. Yeah. If they ever ask you on the call and they're direct and they're like, well, what makes your program different? Like, why is your coaching program different than the other trainers in the area? How do you respond to that? It's a good question. So, well, first of all, you need to, and this is something that I know a lot of coaches don't do, right? So when, when they get on the call, on the call with the parent, uh, they don't break down exactly what their program offers, right? So that's why, obviously, before you even get on the call with, with Mrs. Jones or any parent, you need to make sure you have a list in front of you of what exactly is included in your program, okay? Because it's funny, because parents... A lot of the time they they browse the internet, they look at different programs and they just apply. It. And when they apply, they don't even know what they're applying for most of the time. Mm -hmm. So it's your responsibility as, as the coach to make sure that when you get on that call, that you are breaking down what exactly your program offers. So you would say, right, Miss Jones, thank you for, for taking the time out to answer the questions. Uh, that is providing, obviously, that you've asked uh, Ms. Jones some questions previously. And then what you, do, what you would then move into is, right, I'd like to break down our program for you to show you exactly what is included um, and what your child would be getting when they join us. And then that's when you would break down, okay, you get this amount of training uh, off the field. We do this, this, this. And, it's, and break down and make sure you have about four or five things that sound different to what other coaches are doing, okay? Because you don't want to get on a call with a parent and just say, oh, yeah, we just do training. Because right. automatically you're opening the door to, all right, once that parent hears your price, they're going to be like, they're going to judge your program off the price you've given rather than mm -hmm. the value you provide. Mm -hmm. So it's important that you know exactly what, what you're offering and what's included in your program and that you can provide, I would say between five to seven uh, things that make you different to, to another co coach. Right. So I want to unpack something you said, because I think, most people will miss this, but you said before this question is even asked, what makes you yeah. different? You're already explaining that before they even have a chance to ask that. Correct. Yeah. Right. And what that does is it, it builds more belief with the parent that you're a pro, you know what you're doing. And it's like, you're walking them through the process. So so when you're talking, they are thinking already, wow, this guy's like so much different. 
like what they offer. Cause like, as soon as they get off the call with you, they either have another call scheduled with somebody else or they're messaging another trainer on Instagram and that person is selling it how they sell it. So, right. so yeah, when you control the call like that, it mm -hmm. makes a vast difference um, because that question shouldn't even pop up mm -hmm. on calls with coaches if they're leading the call the way you said. Yeah. And something I've noticed with, with calls I've done is that when you make the, the, the call about the parent, about the child, you know, that most of the time that parent won't even ask you, oh, so what, what's the price of the program? Because they're like so intrigued about the service you're providing to them that it's like that, that just doesn't really, they don't mention that. Right. But when you lose control of the conversation and the parent feels that you're not, you're not, you're not a pro, uh, you're not organized, you don't really know what, what you're saying. In order to finish that call, the first thing they're gonna ask you is, okay, so how much do you charge? And based on what you say, we'll be, we'll be like, okay, that's great, we'll, uh, we'll be in touch with you. And then most of the time, they, they don't, they don't, you'll never hear back from them. Mm -hmm. So it's just important to be very organized, always ask, you know, four to five questions about the child because parents love that. Parents love talking about their kids. Oh, Johnny is a, you know, he's a fantastic player. He's got a left foot. He's got a right foot. He's not very good at heading. He's, um, so then once you got that information, then you say, okay, thank you for answering those questions. I've made a note of what you've said. Um, is it okay if I can talk about my program for, for, for a couple of minutes and tell you what is included? And, you know, parent, a parent's not going to say no to that, really. Right. Yeah. Because because you've already made it a point to listen to them. Yeah. And that's that's the difference is like communication. It should never, sales should never just be you're talking the whole time. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. you're, you're just selling something that they don't even know what they need help with. So it's, that's mm -hmm. why you ask the right questions. They should be talking for the majority of the call. The, the time where you should dominate the call is only really when you're explaining what the program is. That's it. Yeah. Um, cool. So let's let's stay on this topic. So let's say you're talking to a parent, and let's say you ask them some good questions, but some parents just go into outer space. They 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 start talking about things that don't even have anything to do with their child. And and the thing is, is like these parents like talking about their kids. Um, but they could, they could go off the rails pretty quickly in a conversation. And yeah. what do you do when someone's, they just end up start, tar, they, they start talking about other things that don't even matter. How do you reel them back into the intent of the call? Yeah. So good, good question. I think the way I do it and the way I feel that it's worked really well is you have to be clear at the beginning. So as, as soon as you, you start the conversation with the parent, you say to them, right, Miss Jones, this is going to be just a, a 15 minute call. Uh, it might be less, but all we're going to do is talk about your child. Uh, so I can get in a little bit of an insight into what they like. And then I'll take maybe two, two or three minutes to talk about what we offer. Right. So then you go. Sh so at that point, the parent knows, OK, this this is what is expected of the conversation. And it's important that you you move from one thing to another, because like sometimes I know a lot. Of, it does come down to confidence as well. You know, because if you're if you're a confident person on those calls, then the parent will smell that. But what tends to happen is parents go into like into space when they know that you're not in control of the conversation because mm -hmm. it gets to a point where it can become a bit awkward yeah so yeah. you have to make sure that you lead the conversation and that's why i mentioned at the beginning it's, it's all about being organized having questions in front of you and moving through the question bit by bit so that you don't give that parent a chance to then talk about you know something that's not relevant to the conversation right and it's funny too because oftentimes 
if you talk to a parent and there's no control of the conversation, they might feel a little nervous or anxious talk like on the call. So that's when a lot of people, they just, they just start talking. They, they talk about anything that have, could have nothing to do with their child yeah. because there's no structure on the call. And, right. and this is why I know you and me have talked about this before, but when you talk to a parent, everything should be scheduled. It should not be, they're calling you when you're eating dinner or you're busy mm -hmm. and the tone should be set a day or two days before you even have the call so they know what to expect. So Ben, when say a, a parent calls you up and she says, hi coach Ben, uh, I have a friend of, of Mike that wants to join the program. Do you guys offer a referral program or do you offer a discount for, for someone else if he joins? Yeah, so, How would you handle that? Yeah, so the first thing that I would want to do is when she talks about the referral, my ears are going to go up and I want to do one action step. <laughs> I want to say, uh, Ms. Jones, that's awesome. Thank you so much for spreading the word about our program. Uh, first, can you tell me her name and give me her phone number? And I want to do that right off the bat before I tell her anything about the referral program because I want that lead. Yeah. And I want to have the ability to follow up with that person. Mm -hmm. And that way, that way, even though she's on call telling me about that person, it's not her priority once we get off the call to get that person to sign up. It's my priority to do that. Yeah. So after I get, you know, Susie's name and Susie's phone number, mm -hmm. uh, I'll say, great. Like, let me walk you through how our referral program is set up. And I'll give her just different, I'll show her like two different things that are simple for her, for her uh, to understand. Mm -hmm. so I'll say, um, you know, if, if this family ends up joining our program, what I want to do is next month, uh, you'll be billed as normal, but we're going to give you a 50% refund for next month bill. So this way you guys will get, uh, say, 50% off next month. Does that make sense, Ms. Jones? So if she's like, yeah, that sounds great. I'll say, awesome. And I also want to let you know, if you refer three families over the next 60 days that join our program, we're going to give your son 12 months of free training. <gasps> That's what they do. That's why if you talk to them on Zoom and you're writing this stuff out, yeah. right? Okay, 12 months free. That can multiply one person to three people. And this is why like something like this only really works if you're selling upfront payments, because it's like, because mm -hmm. uh, there's no way to track it unless you do that. Um, but that way I'm giving them something tangible. So they've already essentially referred someone. I, we need to close them into the program. So that way next month, Ms. Jones can get 50% off. Mm -hmm. But now she knows there's like a, there's a deadline mm. If they want this. They need to go get two more people to join our program, to mm. join the full program. And think about it, I mean, it's, it's an unbelievable deal to them. They save thousands of dollars yeah. and it's a great deal for the company because like they're bringing in new people that I didn't know yet. Yeah. And these are warm leads coming into something that should convert. Um, so that's how I look to try to move the conversation is I want to show them something tangible and show them like a big goal that they could get mm -hmm. within a certain window, time window. Yeah. So talk to us a bit about how, how important that is to make sure then, because you can't really do that if you're, if you're getting paid cash in hand. Yeah. Well, it'd be, it would be tricky because Let's say they, Ms. Jones tells Susie, who's, who's the new person I haven't met yet, about our program. And I get on a call with Susie and she's like, yeah, we want to train with you next Friday for a trial session. And I'm like, great. And then they sh like, we schedule that, but they don't show up. Well, I just, nothing happened. 
Yeah. And, and also if, if I'm getting paid per session, it would be hard. Like I would never want to give someone 12 months of free training. If like Miss Jones, it would be dumb for me to offer 12 months of free training to Miss Jones. If she's bringing me someone that's paying me per session, because there's zero guarantee that that person's going to come back. Yeah. Right. So it would be a very risky thing. Um, the only way I would say that is if they're paying in cash the full amount for the year, <laughs> which still I would even, I don't know, I still wouldn't even recommend that just because like, you got to go back to the year later and sell the program again. It's not, it's not part of the process that we like with the coaches that we work with. Correct. Correct. And also with, with that amount of money, you know, you could lose it at the, at the field. Yes, it's happened to me before. I've, I've lost a lot of money one day running a camp because I put all the money and stuffed it in my Nike backpack. And I remember I was, it was, I can laugh about it now, but I remember when I left the field that day, I was like, I, I had like, I think it was like 500 bucks. It was in my backpack. I thought it was my backpack. And I cleaned up everything off the field. I get back to my car and I was thinking about like where I was going to eat dinner that night and to go home, shower, go, go somewhere nice with one of my friends. Um, like that's just, that's the old way of thinking. I would never do something like that. No. Uh, mm. And then I get back and I look in my backpack and money's not in there. And then I drive out to the field like 200 miles an hour back to the field to try to figure out where the money is. And once I got there, it's pouring. And I'm out there searching around, looking for the money, like a homeless person. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I never found it. And if I would have not accepted money that way uh, back then, I would have had that $500 and I would have gone out to that nice dinner and I, that, my day wouldn't have been ruined. But uh, even after that, it took me time to transition away from that model. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So uh, I'll ask you one more because this is something that's that's come up in a lot of uh, calls that I've had with coaches recently. A lot of coaches don't want to go online or they don't want to set up some online system because of the payments that occur when you know when parents do pay you. Uh, online right because every every company you use at some point they're going to take some sort of fee off you but like tell us about the importance is is paying that small fee worth it in the long term they're not having a system right cool so i'll just map it out here because if i just say it mm. it will make sense but if i show it it's going to make i think more sense mm -hmm. so let's say let's just keep things very simple let's say you have a parent that's paying a hundred dollars per month right so it's a hundred dollars per month now if that person is paying cash then they're gonna you're gonna have a set day once a month where they have to bring you the hundred dollars. So that means they have to go to the bank that day. So they're, they're driving more to the bank. That means when they give you the money, you're going to the bank. So that multiplied times a lot of clients is just not efficient because if they forget to go to the bank, now they, now the next time they see you, they owe you money. And if they wanted to just say, yeah, we're going to take a break. Well, you're not going to get that hundred dollars for the next month. Correct. So if you are doing things that way where they're giving cash and you're doing it that way because you don't want to pay the 2.8% that Stripe charges, all right? 2.8% of this is $2.80. Yeah. Right? Now, this $2.80 is collecting for me is $100 per month without me asking anyone for money again. So as a trainer, you have to ask yourself, is it worth $2.80 for a robot to collect the money for me without me having to do anything? 
It's not a robot, but it's a system. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and then you have to ask yourself, well, like how valuable is your time? Because like, it might take you a couple of hours going back and forth with someone to give you this hundred dollars. Like, so I'm paying two dollars and eighty cents for this transaction to me is a no brainer when you when you think about what it does for you without you having to go back and sell. Correct. Right. And the other thing that the other complaint that coaches have is like, well, you know, I'm paying a lot in transaction fees. I'm saying, and I say, good. That means your business is doing good. Mm -hmm. But imagine if you don't have those transaction fees. How are you going to collect all the money from everyone? Mm -hmm. And that is where some coaches get, uh, I, I, for, I forget what the saying is. I think it's like you, you trip over pennies to, to get to a dollar. I don't know what it is. But, mm -hmm. um, but it's like, if you look at the long-term growth of your business, going to people personally to ask them for money to pay takes you way longer. You have to text people, you have to call people, you have to make sure they have the money. There's thousands of dollars per year that are lost because of that. When, when we could just literally pay $2.80 for every $100 that's coming in. And to put things in perspective, right? This is, this is scary. So this would be, all right, let's say you're making $10,000 a month. Mm -hmm. And you know this is going to be steady and stable for the next six months. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, to do that, if you use Stripe, you're paying Stripe $280 per month. Yeah. That's 2.8%. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, let's say you're trying to collect $10,000 a month with cash. I would say over six months, you're going to be losing way more than this number here. Yeah, 100%. Like, because you're not going to get 100% of people to pay. Mm -hmm. It's just, that's not going to happen. Yeah. And let's yeah. say, let's say you're in, in this situation, you're charging $300 a month and you have three clients one month out of the six months not pay, right? It's 900 bucks that you just lost because you're not willing to pay $280 per month to streamline everything. And it's not, it's not even saying we're paying this much. It's, it's saying like, we're putting a higher value on our business now because we're letting, mm -hmm. we're letting a system take, take place of all of the money versus us having to go back to people. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I saw like the reason why I'm so like passionate about this, I saw when COVID hit people that were making way more than this, Mm -hmm. go to zero mm -hmm. because they were so comfy doing cash in hand they were they were making money a lot of money cash in hand checks and i saw people go to zero because they did not they were unwilling to pay this yeah small 2.8 mm -hmm. percent fee to do business every business in the world has transaction fees that's just that's part mm -hmm. of it and it's funny because if you would have asked me this 10 years ago, or not 10 years ago, 12 years ago, I would have been like, yeah, like, I'd rather just make, I'd rather just do cash. Yeah. Because I didn't think that way back then. Now it's like, no, that's a no brainer. It's like, I'm, there's no other way to do business for me. Like, that's, that's how it's going to be. And someone's not going to pay online. Like, we've already kind of talked about that. It's like, mm -hmm. I'm not mm -hmm. going to accept them as a client. They can go somewhere else. All right. And also something I'd like to add as well is most, most coaches out there are very unorganized. Yeah. So if you have a hundred clients that are all paying cash in hand, how like just the stress of tracking every payment just is not, is not worth it. Yeah. That becomes a whole nother job. Yeah. Like think about that. That's a hundred people going to the bank to go get you money. And then how many out of those hundred people, how many trips do you need to make to the bank now? And you, and you talked about it on, on a recent video, the urge to spend the money when you have cash in your hand is very high. Yes. It is, oh, I got this 
money out of it. And oh, the IRS isn't going to know. So I'm, I'm just going to go spend the money because I have it and no one knows that I have it. So it's the temptation to become even sloppier with your business is very likely. Correct. Correct. And that's again, that, that's the difference between people that run this like a real thing and people that do it like everybody else. And mm -hmm. I mean, if I had the top 10 most successful coaches I work with on here, like, and I was like, yeah, like, do you accept cash? They'd start laughing and be like, no. Yeah. Like, and they pay a lot in transaction fees total mm -hmm. per year. But that saves them all of the time of having to go back to their hundreds of clients every month. They don't talk to their clients about money. Yeah. 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 I've seen, I've seen a coach actually go with the parent to an ATM to make sure that that parent pays him. <laughs> yeah. And if I was in cash, I'd be doing that with everybody. I'll say, yeah. meet me at the bank. I'll be there in five minutes. Who wants to run their business that way, though? So, sounds more of a drug dealer than, yeah. than, a, than a training business. Yeah. I, I mean, I've, I've experienced that. I've, I've seen people who are supposed to pay me $25 for the session pay me 19 I've seen, I've seen people who are supposed to pay $500 pay me $300. I've seen people, uh, I've been taking advantage so much and it was just because like I was afraid of this little transaction fee that mm -hmm. like honestly I've lost thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars at the beginning of my business because that wasn't set. And, and back mm -hmm. then too, like there, there, were, there weren't a lot of options to mm -hmm. run your business that way. There, there were a couple, but now it's like, there's a million different options. And I mean, yeah, that should be standard with the business. Yeah. Even if you don't have any clients yet, you should only accept money online. Yeah. As well. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So, so, so much easier to track as well. Right. So I have a question for you. Mm. <laughs> Let's say someone has 30 clients because this seems to be a pretty normal like a lot of coaches we talk to on instagram have 30 or so clients 30 to 50 clients mm -hmm. and because they get paid cash from everybody they're not physically seeing all their clients every week right because like some people you talk to they'll have like 30 50 clients but they'll see like these clients on week one, these yeah. clients on week two, it's not, it's not a set schedule. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's, even if they run their program the same way and they, and they switch from getting paid cash to getting paid online, how much more money do you think that they would make if that was in place to where they are collecting on demand the amount of money compared to the amount of people that are on membership that makes yeah. Sense. yeah 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 no a lot a lot more because if you're essentially if you're seeing uh, clients once every two weeks or whatever you know you're, you're not guaranteed that that you're going to see them every once or two weeks because you might see them one week and then in two weeks time they say oh yeah we're going away for for six weeks what are you gonna do then there you go and say, say you've got four or five of them that do the same thing. Oh, yeah, we're going away for three weeks. We're going away for four weeks or whatever. So essentially, you're not seeing them. Mm -hmm. you know, so that's already money lost. Mm -hmm. So even if you are seeing them once every two weeks, you can set up all your clients on an online system. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. It doesn't. I think sometimes coaches get confused. They're like, when, when we talk to them about setting them up like once, training once uh, every week, that's like, that's like a minimal requirement. If you work with clients once every two weeks, that's good, but you can set up the same type of system. Right. It can apply way, to anyone that's part of the program. Correct. If you have a set sort of schedule. And I think... Mm -hmm. Honestly, I think one of the things that hold back a lot of coaches from switching from cash in hand 
to online. It's, and I, this is pretty normal with a lot of people. It's like, they're so comfortable doing something that it's, it's working kind of to where it's like, well, I don't know how it's going to work doing it this other way because none of my clients are on the system. So there's this, yeah. it's fear-based of wanting to switch. Cause it's like, well, I know with how I'm doing it right now, I can make 3k per month yeah. and sure. There's people who miss sessions and it's like, it's easy to let go of the problem when it's halfway working. Mm -hmm. And what we see is when someone is urgent enough, they make the change. Like it's, it's a no brainer and they can get it done so quickly to the point where it's like the next day, that's the standard. So the next person they talk to over the phone, all the things we talked about, like we talked about, you know, negotiating with parents and all that, like that goes away because it's like, no, this is how you're going to run your business. Yeah. And, and I'm going to be completely honest here as well. And something that I think a lot of coaches uh, don't want to do is like when you talk to them about getting clients on, on three or six month commitments, sometimes I feel that it's, it's not the client that they're scared about that commitment. It's actually the coach. Yeah. Coaches are scared to commit in three to six months with a client. Yep. And why so, do you do that? Why do you, why, why do you think that? I'm curious. <laughs> it's because they're, they've got the wrong client. They're probably it's working with the wrong players. Right. I think it's that. And I also think it's, they haven't committed themselves enough to what their business is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it is very difficult though. And I'll, I'll try to give you this example. So I remember when I first started to switch into like commitment based selling. And I knew in my mind, I was like, there's, there's one four or five families that like it's going to be hard for them to do this because I know that they're not that committed. And so when I brought up the commitment to them, I, in my mind, I was like, all right, like they're, they're probably not going to join. Mm -hmm. And what I realized though, is like when I was trying to make that switch from how we were doing things to how I wanted it to be, I, did not make the full switch mentally myself right, yeah. to where it was like, I need to step up the organization. I need to step up leadership. So like, that's why at the beginning, it's hard for me to transition people and do the, the, the longer term commitment. Cause like, I didn't take it as serious as it should have been. Right. And once I switched that, I started to see, oh yeah, these clients aren't committed. So yeah. Right. And then like, I started to attract people who were way more serious. Cause like I had to change me first before I just introduce this new system. And I, and I do think like working with a bad client, they're not gonna wanna commit to something long-term because they're not committed. But I, I do think the coach has to look themselves in the mirror and say, yeah, like I'm not happy with the way this is going right now. I need to change. And, mm -hmm. and until they do that, they're not gonna, not gonna change a thing because it's common to look around at the park and see all these coaches get pay these hundred dollar bills for for their sessions and that seems to be the normal thing for people and it's just long term just doesn't work yeah i agree mm -hmm. cool so i got one last question for you yeah. i think i said that 20 minutes ago <laughs> all right now if a parent is like leo you know I'm really worried about paying online because my, my credit card got hacked a year ago. <laughs> can we can we work out another way where, where we can pay you? And I promise that I'll pay you at the park. I'll pay you, like I'll, I'll mail you a check. Like how are you gonna respond to that? <laughs> that's, that's, that's fantastic. Um, <laughs> first of all, that's, uh, that's just an excuse because I mean, Listen, she she or he probably subscribed to Netflix and you run the same risk, right? Um, so I don't know. I mean, but personally, I would just very, uh, very much in my head question, 
what are these intentions of this parent? Um, and on a professional level, just, just to re reiterate that the terms and conditions of working uh, with us or training in our program is that parents must commit to X amount of time and all payments are done online. Um, and something, because I've, I've had something similar in the past and I've been up front with parents and I said, yeah, we, we used to accept cash, but what started to happen is we used to lose the money at, at the field. So in order to avoid that problem, everything's gone, gone online now. Uh, and, you know, parents can understand that. Any normal parent will understand that. Um, and you just acknowledge, yeah, yes, there is a risk of your, your card being hacked, um, but I can guarantee you it won't be from us. Um, but if you guys want to go ahead and work with us and train in our program, these are the terms and conditions. Mm -hmm. And honestly, that's all really you can, you can, um, you can say to, to a parent. Right. And then if they're like, well, can we just Venmo you the money? <laughs> well, the way I would I would approach that is I'd say um, we don't we don't work through Vimmo either. Our system is is already built to accept through this software that we currently use, mm -hmm. um, and that's the only way we receive uh, payments through parents. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then the parent will understand. Okay, fine. If they want to go ahead with it and they're serious enough, they'll do it. And if they don't, then they'll just go and find another trainer to, to pay to pay cash or pay Vimmo or however they wanna wanna pay. Right. And that see that mindset is very different than what most coaches have because you're willing to detach yourself from that person becoming a client because you're setting the bar here and then they're trying to come in down here with their terms how they want to do things. And I mean, imagine working with them for a month. How, how many problems are you going to run into with them? Scheduling, with communication, like they're going to want a refund. They're going to want like, it's, there's too many, too many things. And, uh, and that's why, like for me personally, I would, I would rather, I'd rather make less money working with people that I enjoy working with that are on the terms that like, that we create. Versus a higher volume of people that just don't care. That just, they're going to do things whenever they want. Because like, you can't protect your time when, when that happens. Yeah. Um, I think essentially as well that when you, when you work with the right type of people, even though you might have less at the beginning, you're, go, you're going to grow. Because you're going to have the right people in your environment. Mm -hmm. uh, when you bring in toxic people, um, now that's not to say just because someone's a bit scared to pay online or whatever, that's that they're a toxic person. You know, they might have got hacked once and they they they're very wary of of that situation happening again, which is fine. It's completely reasonable. Like, especially today where it's very easy to, to hack things. Um, but you just have to be firm with people and you you have to just reiterate your your terms and conditions uh, this is how we used to do things but in order to make our business better and and more more efficient we've moved to this model and um, if you respect that then we're, we're more than happy to continue to, or yeah to continue the process to start working with your child if you're not happy with that then unfortunately uh, we we aren't a great fit for you mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I a, way to, like a way to bring this home is like in the UK, what's your, like, do you have a favorite business or restaurant that you go to uh, in, in the area that, that's yeah. near where you live? What, what's it called? So the one that's very popular here is, is a place called Nando's. Nando's. What is that like? So, so it's like uh, it's peri peri chicken. I don't know if you're familiar with peri uh -huh. peri chicken. No. <laughs> so it's more, it's more like Portuguese 
Okay. Kind of cool. Food. Yeah, I was gonna ask if it was like a yeah, okay. Cool. So when you go to it's called Nando's, right? Nando's, yeah. So when you go to uh Nando's and you order what what do you order there? Chicken and rice. Chicken and rice. <laughs> cool. Sounds good. <laughs> And you go there, you finish your meal. And they're like, man, I love coming to this place. And then the, the waitress comes by or the waiter comes by. They give you the check, right? And you just, you kind of just stop them before they walk away. And they're like, hey, I'm just going to pay on Venmo. What do you, what do you think the reaction would <laughs> be? They'll be like, uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's it's funny though how coaches like when we flip it. Yeah. Coaches are like the waiter doing the service, and then yeah. parents are sitting down at the table. And then when the session's done, it's like, yeah, we're gonna pay this way. And then coach and most coaches are like, okay, cool, here's my Venmo or yeah. or pay me on Zelle, whatever it is. Um and it's funny because like it's some people just need to hear examples of like that because it's like they're they're not thinking of it when they're actively running their sessions and, and collecting money. And when you right. condition people to do things that way, where they can do it however they want, then you're going to end up having way too many different ways you make money from people, and nothing is organized. Correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and it's it's a good example you made because when normally when you walk into a restaurant at the door. They will say we we accept Visa, Mastercard, right. or whatever. Um, so your business doesn't have to be different. Like we accept this card via this this payment uh, system. Mm -hmm. You could put we do not accept Vimo or Cash Cash. So <laughs> right, yeah. and it is difficult i mean it is difficult <clears throat> because like what you what you spoke about at the beginning paying those fees it's hard to adjust your head because in your mind that the, like when you're starting up you don't want to lose money but i think once you start using it and it's working and you realize you know what this is this is a better system then you eventually you realize you know what you know, this is this is the right way to do it. And like in our program, but also in, in every city around the world, like if you go to the, the most successful like sports coaching company in every city, none of them do cash in cash. Mm -hmm. right. Everything's done online. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'll tell you, I'll tell you a funny story that I don't think I've ever told anyone this before but i remember so i was in the i was in the mode of transitioning away from cash and check to getting paid online and i don't know how this even happened but i had a i had an ipad and i saw some i think i saw an ad for uh i don't know if you're familiar there's these uh applications it's called square it's like just like credit card reader that you swipe yeah some restaurants have that and uh they sent me a free one so i would end up getting an into their online system because like every time someone would swipe they would make the transaction fee okay. and i remember i started using that so i would take out my ipad out to the park and parents would get their credit card out and start swiping Okay. and there was a <laughs> I'll never forget this. there was a camp that I ran there was like 20 people there and so there was a line of parents like with their credit cards out just swiping <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the funniest thing is like after after I did that camp I was like this is just weird like yeah. I, can't, <laughs> I can't do that like people are like out with their credit cards and they're in a single file line <laughs> and and the, the thing that's funny about it is because it had like a I had I had it set up where it's like I paid my uh my phone company more to have that so like it would have a connection because it wasn't it was like part of my phone thing. 
And there was a day out there where it like, it wouldn't pick up the connection. So like someone was swiping and it like, it just like, it was like the connection was dead. So that day, it was, it was a day I was running a clinic. Mm-hmm. All the people who were supposed to pay could not pay. So I could not accept any of the money. Yeah. After that, that's when I switched to more of a uh, systematic yeah. approach where people would just pay online before they saw them. And it was funny though, because I remember on that free that day, people were like in a single file line with their credit cards out. And I was just like, I, I didn't even think about it until after it was done. I was just like, man, I was. That's weird. I, I, I shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that, that, that is. Uh, I've never heard of that. <laughs> yeah. And it's funny though, because like any coffee shop I go to here, they have that. That's like. Yeah. But that's a different type of business than training. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But as as you said, the thing is with those companies, it's like they've got Wi-Fi. Yeah available like you're out on the field you could lose signal and if you lose signal you parents can't essentially pay you right so yeah no 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 that's that's a that's a really good story yeah, <laughs> yeah. i'm just picturing 50 parents lined up <laughs> coach ben with his uh, ipad yeah i was out there i'm like hurry 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 <laughs> yeah uh, but again like how long did that take because forever that, that, that must have taken like an extra 30, 40 minutes. I cut into the clinic. I was, and I had it to where you had to pay before the clinic started. And mm. the people who showed up late, and again, this is the, the dis- disorganization of the business back then. It was people who showed up late. I was like, in my head thinking, all right, well, like, do I need to get them to pay like when I'm about to start the session? Am I going to try to like think about their payment while I'm doing the session and, and just get it after? Yeah, and yeah I remember I, I made everyone pay before we started and it cut into my session. So That's it. The session was destroyed. The first five minutes was destroyed because I was collecting money. Yeah. And it's yeah. not a good look too from the parents who got there early because they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. all right, this dude is just like hunting money down. From people that, I, and I just didn't know any better. That, that's the thing. Is like I, I thought that that would work, and it, it was that turned into be an absolute disaster. Yeah, yeah. it's good because you, you you learn from that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, no that that would be a very awkward way mm-hmm. of doing it because it's. As you said, like you start the session and then three kids rock up. You're like, all right, all right, all right, just go over there and just 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 do something, right? And I'll and I'll go and deal with this. <laughs> and then they might be a really hard group to man. And then like you turn around, they're all punching or throwing the balls at each other. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Now it's funny, man, how getting paid it. It's something that a lot of coaches overlook. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I don't know, it it's it is a it, it's a different feeling when you when you leave doing something and you do have the money in your hand. Like it's a it's a it's different doing that versus like the money just in your business checking account. Like because you you have it and it's it makes you feel like you almost like you earned it. Yeah. Um but that feeling goes away when people forget the money and we lose it or like there's so many different. Uh, so I'll tell you, uh, like I currently do uh, clinics for a, a local football center. So soccer center and their, their model is they, they pay coaches a uh, cash. So you finish the clinic and then they pay you cash. But I really dislike that because I'm a type of person I want to put it straight into my bank because I know if I if I have it on me I'm going to spend it on something stupid. So it's really hard I find it really hard to go because obviously Saturday and Sunday the banks over here are closed. So I have to wait till Monday to to deposit that into my business account. Mm-hmm. So all the, the whole weekend it's in my wallet looking at me. 
like are you gonna spend me are you gonna do this and i'm like i'm i try not to like look at it because i know i know i'll, I'll blow it on something dumb yeah um and i really that's that's something i really hate about it. yeah it feels good because you're getting paid straight away for something you've done but then you've got to keep it for like 48 hours with you and it's there looking at you come on come on you sp spend me big boy spend me and you've got to be super disciplined with your money yeah i bet i bet nando's loves that they're like we see leo every week <laughs> yeah we see leo every week you know no. That, that's why on the drive home, I, I go the other way. So I don't go past it. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's that's the only thing I, I dislike about doing those those clinics for that place is they pay you cash, but then it's just so tempt the temptation to spend it on a soda or a chocolate bar or yeah. Nando's or something really, really dumb. Yeah, that five, six dollars turns into 21 dollars turns into 50 like yeah That's very cool. quickly uh yeah people a lot of people don't have control of how they spend their money which is a whole nother thing we should probably talk about on a different day uh that, yeah. <laughs> that could be a, a four-hour episode i don't know <laughs> cool man thanks for Thanks for doing that. So I know, yeah, there's a lot to unpack there.